just you are live. All right. Hey, Yay, everybody. Nick. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to anyone uh, seeing us on Facebook or YouTube. My name is Margaret Pennard, and this is Whitney Sher and Jenna Plum, as you all know from A Mighty Blaze. So Hi. I thought we would pop in and uh, say hello, but I'll, I'll let them say hello, and then I'll introduce them and introduce what we're doing here today. That sounds awesome. Thank you, Margaret. I feel like I'm in cats. Like I can see myself between them. It's like, wow, I'm in cats, but I'm really sparkly, which is weird. But actually, these are like little snowbally things. I love it. Tonight we are gathered to talk about Yola Book of Flood, which is Margaret's festival, which is coming up on the Blaze December 18th through 20th, right? Woo yes, exactly. Oh, thank All right. Thank God. <laughs> it's so bad with dates. Um, and we're gonna talk about Higa because it's a concept that basically fuels Yola Book of Flood. Yes. That's why I am in Whitney's amazing backyard tent with a wood stove Just and some stretch. Christmas pudding and some glue vine, and we're higging it up out here. And also Henry Higa is out in the dark somewhere with Whitney's, it's really quiet out there. I know, I know. I know. It's really, we're like, uh-oh. Yeah. The dogs were like, running around like crazy and now they're extremely quiet yeah, in the dark, which is a little scary. It's disturbing. So yeah. we have wolves. We have like genuine wolves. There's like the Henry wolf and then a Bella Labradoodle wolf and a small Clementine wolf. I love all, all the feelings. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So tell us about the festival. Yay. So um, I'm glad to be here and telling people about it. It's a literary festival. Basically, uh, I live in Portland, and so I, I'm calling it PDX because that's where we started. But it's welcome for everyone to attend because it's just for readers and writers and people who love books and celebrating, really. So it's a literary festival for indie authors and small presses. It's focused on authors of the Northwest, but we've also got partners on panels who are from all over. And uh, one, at least, was coached from where you will recognize them. And... Um, yeah, we're celebrating having a good community event in the middle of winter because you can really go down in the dump in the middle of the dark, dark winter. Especially if you're living next to the Arctic Circle like people in Oakland do. Oh, God, <laughs> that's so grisly. We feel like we're living in the Arctic Circle in Boston, but we're really not. And ever since COVID, like, Yola has so much to teach us all during COVID about how do you get together, maintain a healthy outdoor distance, and yet feel really connected. And we do this online, or we can do it in a tent. But ever since COVID, you know, Whitney got this awesome tent. And um, so I don't feel quite so Arctic Circle anymore because we have like light and heat against the wolves. Out yes, we do. And we're living that, I have not read that book, but you know the book that is, um, it's about how everything should happen outside and just have to have a proper year to put on. And it's, I, I think it's, it might even be like a parenting book, but it's just the idea is like just to be outside all the time. And I actually feel like that is like one, huge benefit of what's been going on lately is that I've just been spending so much more time outside and I'm like, oh, this is fine. It's yes. 40 degrees. That's fine. Yes. I'm good. It's also good. not 40 degrees in the tent. No. Whitney has a wood stove in here. I'm actually going to lift you guys up. Yeah. Really yeah. Show you. Except like she actually has like a wood stove in here. You guys, it's the coolest thing. It's so, ever. It's so amazing. So on that, on that topic of like 40s over here, um, Jenna, you'll appreciate this being from the Midwest. Chef John Kung on uh, TikTok had a video up that said he was, you know, uh, duetting someone who was uh, freaking out about 45 degrees from the South, just like how cold it was and how it was 45 degrees. And he says, when I hear people from the South talk about the cold, he pulls up the blinds, opens the window, reaches out, just like eating from an ice cream carton that was sitting outside. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We should nice. do that this winter. That is my boss. <laughs> We're totally gonna do that. So, uh, like, I'm I'm so bad with like I know. positioning I the laptop. Sorry, you guys. Too. We'll we'll get this figured out by like the next time we. Oh, uh, that oh, that's, works. That's good. Ooh, it's yeah, good. Are Wait, you, like, no. Really yep. Oh, better. Oh, better. That's okay. Good. Good. Well done. So I have to tell you about the stove, or you should talk about the stove because oh, the yeah. stove actually works. It's I mean, it works to heat the place, but you can cook on it. Yes. which I am just like what? Yes. I will tell oh. you about the stove. So. The stove sent me down this rabbit hole of prepper websites where people buy things for the end times. Yeah. And, and it is a portable wood stove. This, these flaps here with this is sitting that flip up and you can supposedly carry this thing around. Although it weighs like 45 pounds. So, you know, who knows? But on top of it, covered wagon. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cheryl Craig can carry it in yeah. her monster backpack. So, oh, there you go. Right. Um, but yeah, on top of it, you could just put your, your mulled wine or <laughs> hot chocolate or whatever, and it, it'll boil it in like just a couple minutes. It's pretty cool. Oh, tell about the thing. Oh, yeah. That, the, the thing I can't even, I won't even say. And then there's a the thing it. that I don't own that I'm coveting that is a little oven that you can put into the stovepipe and you can bake like cookies and pie and stuff in it oh on your God. stove. I know, so I might do that at some point. <laughs> so basically yeah. we're gonna be doing this all winter. We're gonna be hanging in the tent, or at least I will be. Like Whitney yeah. will get up in the morning and be like, who's in the tent? Oh, it's Fräulein Glühwein. And I'm gonna be out here like shuffling around in my mucklucks, like making Glühwein and experimenting with bread. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm gonna eat it all. So it actually works out fine. I'll be like, Fräulein Glühwein, what do we have for me today? And I'm like, oh, oh. it's a sticky mess of dough with some hard bits. <laughs> that, that actually did not cook at all. Right. <laughs> oh well, enjoy, enjoy your sticky dough. I feel like the Fräulein Glühwein is like transitioning into the troll under the bridge now with that question of like every day, like what do we have today? How do I get across? I kind of feel like she is that character, which is like not a trope I ever really wanted to play, but I feel yeah. like Fräulein okay. Glühwein even sounds like an old old woman with a stick. Oh my God. Hi, Steven. Where are our cookies? <laughs> Where are my cookies? Bitch, you were supposed to send me some chocolate chip cookies and then somebody in your house supposedly ate them. Oh, let's we talk about that. Yes, Jenna, okay. please talk about this. This is what we have in lieu of cookies. Okay, in lieu of cookies, today we have my mom's hot dish from 1972. Um, before I was even born, Let's, we'll just go with that. And in this, <laughs> We have a Norwegian cream pudding called rumogrout, which is basically a cream pudding, which we make every year. Norwegians make it every year for Christmas. Rumogrout from Norway, yes, exactly. Yep, totally right. Yay. And I grew up eating this. Let's put it on the stove and see what happens to it. Is it, you think it's okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. I put this in the oven all the time. Oh, okay. So yeah, right, it's cool. not just decorative. All right. Haha, <laughs> famous last word, there. boom. I know. <laughs> Things that rumogrout go boom. It looks yeah. so <laughs> Like boomagrout. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> like, 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 okay, so I'm going to tell you the um, the story behind the rumogrout is that every year on Christmas Eve, my mom would make this for me and my brother and my sister and my Jewish dad, who said he was like the only Jew to ever like rumogrout. And he knew he must be like part Norwegian in addition to Russian and Polish because he actually could eat like a whole bowl at a time. Mm. Any suitor I brought home would have to eat some size of bowl of rumogrout, and if they could eat a big boy bowl, then he could be accepted into the family. There was only like <laughs> one person who ever did it who actually liked the rumogrout, and then who actually ate a whole bowl, which is Jim Reed. Like Jim could eat like that whole pot of rumogrout. He's like, this is delicious. Everybody else is like, what? what? My question is how big is the big bowl? Big, big bowl is like that big, like that big, like, like, big, it's just like pop of like, bear. Nice. Pop of bear bowl. But um, so that's the family story, but the apocryphal story is that um, Norwegian settlers used to make this and then give it to women who had just given birth, pioneer women, so that they could then get up a few hours later and go work in the fields because rumogrout was so miraculously curative. And when my grandma fell and broke her hip when she was 93 years old, she was like on her way out, just in the hospital. She had, like a death rattle in her lungs and we thought she was going to die, like to the point at which we called in the whole family from across the country. We gather around her bed and I thought, I'm going to go get her some rumogrout. So I drove from Minnesota to Iowa, found some old ladies who were selling rumogrout, brought it back to my grandmother, fed it to her, and the next morning she was like, oh, <laughs> what are you all doing here? And my <laughs> uncle, who is so soft hearted, was like, goodbye, little butterfly mama. And he was like, oh, you're okay? And she lived four more years when she was 97. So that is the power of rumogrout. And wow. so that is what we are having in season. It's like ultimate higa, like ultimate. Goodbye, oh, little butterfly mama. Goodbye, little butterfly mama. <laughs> she was like, oh, hi, hello. Which coincidentally Thanks should be hair. the name of your next memoir. Uh, goodbye, little butterfly mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. It would be so good. Or at least a short story. Totally, totally, yeah. totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's the story behind the grout. What's in it? Exactly, for the curious cooker. Uh, the curious, yes, I posted this on my Facebook page last night, guys. So Jenna Blum on Facebook, you'll see that there's a link there from Book Club Cookbook. And the recipe and the story It is, I don't know if you want to eat it after this. It's <laughs> cream that you boil for 15 minutes, heavy cream. None of this half and half bullshit. Like 
heavy cream that you boil for 15 minutes while you stir it with like a stick, ideally. Wow. Um, I don't okay. use a stick. So and then you add flour and then butter boils up out of the mixture. You pour the butter off and you save right it to put on the top of the finished pudding. Oh, do we need to keep that up? Oh, yes, we need to okay. keep that too. And um, then there's a quart of milk that you scald and then you combine with the cream flour mixture and stir for 15 minutes. And then mm -hmm. it forms this beautiful velvety cream pudding. And then you put um, uh, cinnamon and sugar on it and extra butter. This is the most Norwegian thing I have ever heard of. It is so Norwegian. It is white like snow and we'll put meat on your bones so you can work in the fields in the winter. Good, good with Kluvine. You know, Yay. hi Anissa. I love Anissa. She's not like at all the events. Like Anissa, Yay. you are my girl. I, I see you. And the last thing we have is, is um, we have Viking blood, which I will- Oh, I've had that. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I have never, we have never had it before, but we're gonna have it tonight. Uh, based from a recipe from about the year 1700, it says. Oh and you can serve it apparently literally any way. Cold, over ice, hot, it doesn't matter. It's like a honey wine. Yeah, it's sweet and it's so good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to drizzle a little bit. Here, over I think we should try it. Crowd. Should we try it right now? Let's try it. We should try it. We shall. We're taking it. Yeah. yeah. We're taking it. Cultural learning in, in the flag. Your La Boca flood. Hi, Alex. So there is a dairy-free option for the rumagrout. It's called flour. So if you get a bag of flour and you eat it with a spoon, <laughs> that would be the dairy-free option. What about gluten-free? Um, that would be the butter it's and cream butter. option. <laughs> you just get like a big bowl of cream and you eat it with a spoon. I'm so sorry, guys. Like this is like you know a recipe from like 1780 or something. So gluten free, dairy free. If you Not needed so those options, you were just sol in the field, baby. You just had to eat like mutton with your hands yeah. <laughs> or like ox. Yeah, I think it was just reindeer. <laughs> reindeer shank. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Like too fun. Okay, let's try this. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wait. Oh, should we hear? Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. This to is your it. Love it. We're like toasting the flood with blood. Nice. I don't remember who. Oh my god, that's good and weird and good. Oh, it's kind of like dessert wine. It's, it's like good. dessert wine. It's like mildew and honey. Yes, it has a funkiness to it. Probably because it was sitting in the liquor store for the last forty-five years. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the counter. They were like. <laughs> It's really weird. They just look at me like I was insane. <laughs> but the blood wine? The, 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 oh, the okay. joke blood no, wine? The joke wine. Are you sure. a Viking? Okay. okay. It's yummy. It's like mildew with honey. Whitney's Ooh. tent is the attraction. <laughs> About the tent. And I had to come see Sari. Hi, hi. Sari. <laughs> hi, Sari. We're toasting you with our Viking blood. Sari, you need to come see the tent on Sunday. Yay. Oh, my God. Wait, what's happening on Sunday? Are you saying chunkies? Yeah. Oh, <gasps> oh, this is the this is the place to be, guys. If you're in Boston and you can like use your homing device mm -hmm. to figure out where it is, you should definitely come. Definitely. I've been driving around for four years trying to find this, and tonight I just happened to find it. Luckily. <laughs> mm -hmm. so if you don't know the con the concept of Hugo is the yeah. Danish Danish word. Someone I, I kept thinking it was Swedish, and someone reminded me it's Danish. Oh. In Denmark, they um, place lights, candles in the house a lot in winter, rep repeatedly, right? To, to spread some cheer because yeah. it gets so dark for so long, which is lovely. Yeah. But I think we just sort of spread the concept out wider to be like the cozy, the domestic, the the sheltered and like, you know, relaxed at home things you can do to not feel so isolated and cold and, and lonely. <laughs> Right, so this is good for COVID, and it's been a theme for Yola Boca Float. So I'm I'm so pleased about the tent. So, so Margaret, how does the how does the theme play out in the in the Yola Boca Flood Festival? What do you guys do to make it bigger? So it's it's kind of in the branding. So you'll see um, we have a red bubble shop because we're we're just like that. Oh, and wow. Our logo is this like cute little T because we're all about oh, books and so tea. Cute. And, um, you know, when we're in person and we can meet uh, in person, we have a lovely space. It's at a cultural center that's Scandinavian based and um, it has lights all around and it's right next to a restaurant that serves food. So we had food cart snacks that were um, 
Scandi style. We had someone play the nickel harpa. So that is a Swedish, I think, uh, kind of like a violin keyboard that you play like this. <laughs> So it was like music and just a convivial atmosphere. We had a bunch of people just sitting at tables and talking with people who came in. Um, I'm trying to think what else we did. I, I uh, <laughs> Music, food. Um, we did like a raffle the first year. It's just the ideas that come up when you try them out. This is our third year. So this is, this is a big departure. It's sort of like a level up for us to go from a book fair to a literary festival. Mm -hmm. And the topics people chose are super fascinating. Um, so they're not all cozy focused. I really wanted to get people talking about things that are uh, close to their heart and, you know, like really important to them in their books or just in life in general or in their work as authors. So we've got um, some interesting ones like um, we talked about Lucy's on Monday. She's doing one about creatives and valuing your worth and how do you like price oh, yeah. your books or how do you, you know, come to terms with the whole, oh, I'm selling a thing and it's not me, but I have to promote it. And how does my, you know, how do you not get wrapped up in that? Yeah. It's really good. There's one gal, Paula Butterfield, who's doing one on the siege of Paris in 1870 and how that produced art. And so she's like, talking about COVID as sort of as a siege and how we could take something else out of this besides like our ever loving loneliness. <laughs> yes, yes, I love that. Yeah. yeah. People came up with some great ideas for just reactions against COVID, but also just stuff um, that is in their work and, you know, a great idea to share with people, so. I like, cannot wait to see this. And you guys, in case you're joining us late or you would like a reminder, Yola is the 18th to the 20th of December, and it's going to be on The Blaze, on The Blaze Facebook and YouTube, and on Yola Book of Fluid PDX, right, Margaret? Yes. So if you want to not forget about it, you can subscribe to the pages on the Yola Book of Fluid PDX YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to put the dates in there. Um, we also have a website with the whole schedule and you can add it to your calendar if you have Google Calendar and that's easy. It's yolabookaflowedpdx.com and I will write that out because it can be hard to say. I actually just did a video. Do you guys know what a book tag is? A book what? A book tag. A book no. Tag. I do not know what that is. I do not know what a book tag is. Um, so, uh, basically I'm in booktube, so I do videos on YouTube as a author and a reader. And, uh, one of the things people do just as, as a fun game is to answer a short set of prompts and then tag people to do it kind of like a chain letter oh, oh, okay, about cool. about books. Yeah. And so I, I just made one up about Yolo Book of Float and there are things like the hot cocoa, the gift, the discovery. Yule Book of Flow is all about discovery of new authors because it's indie authors we're trying to, you know, bring to people's attention. Oh, nice. And yeah, it was super fun. But I started it with, here is how you pronounce it. And I did like a little screen. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully that helps people. <laughs> now you do this. It took me like three months to learn how to say Yule Book of Flow. And uh, Margaret and I worked together on the place as this Whitney and we'd be in meetings now and say, the Boca Boca. <laughs> Yola Boca, I'd be like, no. I'm I like, definitely Yola thought it was Boca. Jula Boca, which Jula is like Boca, so Jula bad. Jula Flota Boca, I'd yeah. be like, no. Yeah. But now I know it's Yola Boca Flota. I can say it in my sleep. Oh my God, why are you in the tent? Out, wolf. Oh, out, 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 damn spot. Out, the dog out. is in the tent. Out, out, out. The no, wolves, the wolves are in the tent, you guys. Steven, I want, I would like Steven to do, um, really what, is the, 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 what is it, the mouth harpa? Mouth Nickel harpa. harpa. What's that instrument? Yeah, nickel harpa. Nickel harpa. Steven, nickel can harpa. you play a nickel harpa? <laughs> <laughs> he plays, you play everything. We would like to know, and we would love, and I'm sorry that I used the B word. I'm just really mad that I never got my cookies, Steven. So I hope at Christmas I may get some cookies, and I offer a nickel harpa olive branch to you. <laughs> Okay. How is that? I'm never gonna. I think um, the gal who is doing it for us, who who went to school and still lives in the Portland area, she went to study with someone in Sweden, I believe, and it was like the last person who knew how to make them. So she came back and made her own instrument, and you know, it's one of those things where like there's very few people who know how to do this, and so it's like any kind of reviving of the traditional art is something that I love. So that's so cool. That is super cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love that. And tell everybody who doesn't already know, although of course you should all know this by now, but what Yola Book of Food means and what the tradition is outside of your festival and fair. Yeah. The origin. So yes, it's uh, so it sounds like it in English. It's Yule Book Flood, and it's the Iceland tradition starting after World War II, I believe, where the precious commodity of books was so valuable to this book-loving community in Iceland that they would get super excited when the catalog came out. We just came out with our book at Tidindi, and I don't know how to pronounce that. That's my closest approximation. <laughs> the book catalog, and go through and look at everyone's books and get excited because they gift uh, books to each other on Christmas Eve, and that's sort of what they exchange as gifts, and then they take them home and read them through the night with a cup of hot cocoa. So it's like, uh, yes, 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 and yes, please. <laughs> yeah, that's like my dream. That's like dream. I know, I know. So like, why don't we just do that all the time? I yeah, love it. every month we should do it. Yeah, like it's seriously. Like, <laughs> it's such a good yeah. idea. Yeah. I've had a tradition for like a number of years that first started when I worked at Grub Street, the creative writing center, and then kind of moved into this friend group of mine, which is that every year we do like a secret Santa book exchange, but it's, you get two books each and you, you make a list of like five or 10 books that you want. And then the, somebody draws your name from a hat and they have that list of your books and then they buy you one book from your list and they buy you one book that they think you might like. Oh, so, cool. it's so great because you get, you're guaranteed to get a book that you want. And then the person has to like, be like, you know, thoughtful. And then the, the, the thoughtful book is always like, of course, the most fun because it's like unexpected. And, you know, and, and anyway, it's so much fun. It's like the greatest tradition. It's not like a, it's like a flood of books, but it's, <laughs> it's like a small, a small little flood of books. And it's really it's lovely. Like Flame of a books. little flame, a little it's a flame of blaze, books. a little blaze of books. What was your favorite book that you got that way? I love that. Oh, you know, one year um, I got uh, a collection of Angela Carter's The Bloody Chamber, the collection of Angela Carter's short stories. Do you know? Oh, her? No, I don't know. That. Oh, it's so cool. It, she's she writes like um, modern interpretations of fairy tales. Like her work is kind of based oh, on fairy so tales. So cool. And uh, I think it was Sonia Larson who gave it to me actually, and she was like, you know, like this. Angela Carter's work like really reminds me of your writing and I was like what like it didn't it doesn't didn't feel to me like it did but when I read it I was like I felt this sort of I don't know if, I, I don't know if it reminded me of what I write but it made me like I appreciated it in this in the in a, in a writerly way you know yeah that is super interesting yeah. and for those of you who don't know this is Whitney Scherer PS um, who <laughs> who is the author of The Age of Light which is this fantastic book about Lee Miller and her time in Paris and her time with Man Ray um, and it has it has everything in it. How she became like a war photographer and her her battles with her dark past. And I don't, I'm probably not telling this really super okay. well, but it's about creativity and it's about a creative woman coming into her own despite all the obstacles against her. And it has like passion and sex and art and food and Paris fashion. Hitler's bathtub butter butter <laughs> terrible, <laughs> which I've been obsessed with ever since reading like a really early draft. Um, so if you haven't read Age of Light yet and you are a historical fiction fan or a fiction fan or just you love good writing, do yourself a favor, put that on your Yola Boca Flow list and give it to like all the people because Thanks, yeah. they will be happy. You're welcome. It's true. I don't actually plug books I don't like, even if I'm in that person's tent. Like I just want to do it. <laughs> I just did even if I'm in a <laughs> I would have been like, well, let's move on to another topic. Like the wolf is back at the door. Hi, wolves. By the way, is it it's raining? It's raining. Yeah, it's raining. Which is the like tent. the most like Higa thing ever. Like the tapping of the rain on the canvas tent is really kind of lovely. Yeah, it is. Except for the wolves who are yeah. just like, we're cold and <laughs> wet in the dark. Can we come into the tent? We're like, I don't no. Know. Wolves. Can you see the dogs at the door? Maybe not. Oh, here comes Clem. I see like a muzzle. That's it. Oh, it's like almost like snowing, I think. Yeah. What is it's happening? Sweet. Look, you can see it on oh the light. God. Look, it's like bouncing off the light. Yes. Oh, no. no. It's legit, like hailing. All of a sudden, randomly, you can come in, Henry. Yeah, like, Henry. Henry sad. just came into the tent because he was like, "Is sleeping on me, and I don't even know what this stuff is." <laughs> yeah, I've never seen snow or sleep before, okay, no, so no, no, it's no, no, very no. exciting. On the couch. Yeah, uh, Henry, come here, come here, Bean. Eh, Watch eh, out for the mine. Eh, oh God! Okay, <laughs> sit. Can you sit? He's like, what is this cord? <laughs> he's a little right now. Yeah, he's okay, like, what is, here's, here's one of the questions from the tag. What is the coziest book that you have read this winter or expect to read this winter? 
And I put I put uh, Greer McAllister's Arctic Fury in there. That's just coming out. And what's funny is that I was at the Historical Fiction Half Hour with Carrie Callahan and Linnea Hartsaker, and they talked about this book. Greer was a special guest, and um, they got into quite the Viking uh, historical fantasy discussion and how much of it involves cannibalism, and we were all like cracking up because this was at the end of the happy hour, and everyone had had their drink or two. <laughs> oh my god, is that oh Hega god. also? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yeah, we eat you so we don't have to leave the house. <laughs> exactly. We're so cozy. Would that be so bad? My must take a book. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. Get out of the tent, Wolf. Dogs out. Dogs out. Into the cold and sleep. Okay. Um, <laughs> in Higa time. Yeah. What is the? Oh my God. What is the? <laughs> sorry, Mark. <laughs> all right, all right. I was witnessing my my niece Heather train her new dog, and like we were texting a little bit about how difficult it is, but. He does not like the doorbell we learned on this trip. Like, oh, I guess no. we heard also the leaf blower. We heard that the dog doesn't like leaf blower. That's blowers. a dog. That's the little. That's the little yappy dog that was sick yesterday. So she was being vocal about the leaf blower man. Yes, that is kind of adorable. I don't know. You know, honestly, like I have this terrible um, synapse in my head that. Like whenever anybody asks me, what is your favorite book or who's your favorite author or like what book are you reading right now? What are you most looking forward to reading? I can't remember for the life of me. So I will think about what my most Higa book is. What's your most, what are you most looking forward to reading this winter? I mean, like it, it sort of depends on how you define Higa. And I suppose if you read, if you read the Arctic Fury and you thought it was Higa, then I could define it any way I want. <laughs> That's an expect, yeah. expect to be cozy. I haven't read it yet. Yeah. No. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, because I feel like books that are about like bleak, cold places, I actually find very Higa because the more you read that, the, the more you want to like snuggle and, and be cozy. Like it sounds like you would want to do with your book. And yeah. like I love. I um, oh my god, I'm totally blanking on the name of it now. Per, per Pedersen. Um, oh, Out Stealing Horses. Out Stealing Horses. I was, like, I was like, all the pretty horses. No, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> out Stealing Good Horses, title, though. which I love that book and just reread it this year, actually, and um, feel like it's like, I don't know, it's like, it's such a, it's a book that like when I, when I picture reading it, I picture like everything taking place in the dark, which isn't totally mm -hmm. true, but there's a lot of like nighttime scenes in it. And for some reason it just makes you want to like snuggle right. and get cozy next to a fire and read it. And it's so good. It's such a good book. I need to read that. Oh, I you would love it. it. Oh, it's yeah, fantastic. Crazy. I, yeah. mean, I think there's a new Frederick Bachman book out too, but we're talking about like, yes. you're totally right. Like so the most Hega book I think I ever read besides the Emigrant series that I talked about the last time I was hanging out with you, Margaret, but the most take a book I ever read that made me feel warm and cozy because I wasn't actually living it was The Children's Blizzard. And I forget who oh. the author of that is, but it was like basically like could have happened to my ancestors who settled in Minnesota. There was this uh, blizzard, a freak blizzard that came up out of nowhere. And I think April 18, I want to say 76, I could be wrong about that. And the day before and the day of the blizzard was freakishly warm. It was like 50 degrees. Everybody was like, oh, and it was, you know, it was February. So everybody's like, oh, this is so nice. They were out like cleaning up their door yards. The children went to school. They went without their winter coats because mm -hmm. they could. And the blizzard came up while they were at school. And the teacher, oh. instead of keeping them in the schoolhouse because she didn't have enough to burn, like the blizzards last three days on the plains, she was like, we'll never make it. Um, we don't have enough chairs to chop up. So I'm going to send them home and hope they can make it. And a lot of them, like the book is about what happened to the people who were caught out in the blizzard. And it was- uh, Is it a book or a short story? It's actually a book. And oh, then it became- there's a short story about that. Exactly. Yeah, no, there's a yeah. lot, like there's a lot in the popular imagination about it. There was actually a song written about it called The Great Fury. Mm -hmm. Like they're all, it was like this very big tragedy. Um, and it also helped give rise to like modern meteorology too. So <laughs> um, it had all of my interests at heart, but I was so happy while I was reading it. I read it in Minnesota in 2016 in the winter when it was like minus 40 degrees outside. And I was like, I should remind myself what real cold <laughs> yeah. could is, be worse. Could be worse than like <laughs> yeah. the problems with actual hypothermia instead of me being like, I have to wear a hat in the house. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> and I think Melanie Benjamin is coming out with a book this year, also called The Children's Blizzard, that oh. if I'm not mistaken, is about that. So I'm really looking forward to investigating that, like making it even more accessible. So, I mean, it's like the best title ever. Isn't it? Yeah. The Children's yeah. Blizzard. I yeah. mean, it's so evocative. And can you imagine being that teacher and just being like, okay, kids, hope you make it home. Bye bye. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. No, oh, but okay. Well, here's a story about the teacher, actually. So the teacher tried to guide some of the children home and she tied them together mm. as you, so that yeah, they yeah. wouldn't get lost because you couldn't see in these right. blizzards. The snow was actually, it was the temperature drop was so precipitous. The snow was like sand and it would sting your eyes and you couldn't see anything. So she tied them together and she would like, some of them would get unleashed and like disappear into the howling wilderness. And the teacher actually, I think, ended up with one student attached to her and she climbed into a haystack with the student and tried to shelter the student through the storm. And I think the student survived and the teacher survived too, but like lost her legs oh, to frostbite because there wasn't enough room in both in the haystack for both of them. She was like the hero teacher and people mm -hmm. all over America were sending money to her for her upkeep because she was a spinster <laughs> and didn't have a family. So <laughs> The, the hero spinster and so i like it money i like it oh my gosh i know there's a really good there are a lot of good stories there right yeah yeah absolutely yeah it's amazing <laughs> it has a similar a similar exchange everyone has to pick three authors that they've not read so they will read a new to them oh that's so cool that's a great idea that is a really cool idea. because everybody has those authors that you're like why have I never read, you know, like, like Jess Walters. Yeah. Like, I have not read Jess Walters and I loved having him on the blaze and I know beautiful ruins is so well regarded. I a million sounds that. fascinating. Love Whitney loved it. We should yeah. do a book exchange. We should do a book exchange. Yes. I know what I'm going to get you. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Margaret, what are you looking forward to reading most besides the Arctic Fury? <sighs> um, well, I'm doing, let's see, I'm doing some buddy reads. I'm doing some research reads. I'm reading Mark Oshiro, who just came out with a new book, but I think the most, all right, well, I just finished this. I just finished an oldie book, oh, cool. Audre Lorde, so oh, that was awesome. really good, and I'm going to do a video about that. Awesome. Wait, do you have all post-its in your book? I love seeing that so much. Ooh, this looks Yeah, cool. there's the scary picture of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> this looks Higa, fascism, yeah, populism, fascism, populism. <laughs> populism in history, and this is what I got in, in the summer, funnily enough, when we were all feeling it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I just, I want to get to it, so I brought it with me as part of my, like, eight books that I have while I'm here in California that I will have to read because I didn't bring anything else with me. <laughs> Enjoy that. You know there is this thing called a Kindle, so if the fascism, populism, and history is, like, well, not even Higa, a bookstore. Or a bookstore. Yeah. Oh, I rated I rated my local bookstore before I left. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna pop that in there. It's called Backstory Books. If anyone's in uh, Portland, please. Oh, cool. Backstory Books. She's amazing, and she's. Um, dee -dee -dee. Uh, oh, now I'm gonna mess it up. She's Smith or Wellesley? I think she went to Smith. I I am not in a women's college crowd, but I know how tight knit they are, so I don't want to get that wrong. <laughs> You're gonna have a lot of women coming after you. Well, she has some sort of Wells, or she has some sort of Massachusetts women's college roots, is what you're saying. I believe, yes. <laughs> Good save. Good save. Love yes. That. So yeah, I've got a limited stock here. I don't really do ebooks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like to put notes in. I like to turn corners over. Like. Yeah. Um, just because it helps me remember where things are on the page. I'm a visual rememberer, so when I go back to talk about it, I like to remember, oh yeah, it's that one on the bottom right, and yeah. <laughs> I also feel as though when I finish a book, like an actual book book, because I don't read on a screen ever, like I just refuse to do it because I'm on a screen so much for work that right. why would I want to be on a screen even more? Not that I don't love this, but it's not the same as, yeah. you know, as when I sit in the corner of my couch with a bowl of soup and yeah. a Book, book, yeah. Book, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a Higa thing. But yeah. when I finish reading a book I really love and then I can put it in my shelves like alphabetically, that really pleases me. Like, I feel like I'm adding like a gold bar to a store of treasure that I've been hoarding my whole life and like adding to my whole life. Nice Scrooge, Scrooge of the books. I like it. Well, okay, now I'm like, I'm a troll. I'm a I will say though that I, I recently got a book on Kindle. I don't, I also don't read on the Kindle because I just, I think all the reasons that you've just said, but I had to get this research book and it was like $3 on Kindle mm. and $50 mm -hmm. on paper. Yeah. So on Kindle. And 
I've been highlighting all of this stuff and just realized that you can then export all of your highlights <gasps> in one yeah. document. And I was like, okay, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Research, that's pretty amazing. So I have been doing that. <laughs> oh my God, that is fantastic. Because a lot of the research books too, if you're writing historical fiction, which you are, is like, there's one book about the thing that you're writing about and it costs $750. Yeah, so although so many of them, but they are, yeah. like it's way cheaper. Yeah. yeah, it made me feel really hidden yeah. inside. Snuggly. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All Higa inside. I honestly don't, I don't think we're going to be able to top that tonight. We should all just like post to each other while we're feeling I know, warm totally. and Higa. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Club. Now our dogs are really murdering each other. Oh my God. Our tent. To Yola Boca Flood. We can't wait. I can't wait. What yeah. time does it start on the 18th? I'm going to be yeah, there. On the 18th, oh, so our kickoff event is at 7, so that's a little late for the East Coast. It's 10 p.m., but the panels will start at uh, 10 and 11 on Saturday and Sunday. Cool. So the the broad range should be um, pretty easy to sign up for. And well, I don't have it ready. I'll put it in later. Um, you can look up Yola Boca Flood PDX on YouTube. That's where uh, we would – Explain, I guess we have the things that are events. We haven't put Facebook events up for the Blaze yet. Anyway. So, and we could watch them later too, if we didn't, if we missed them when they like be up there forever, right? Out, <laughs> out. Up there forever, as long as our digital civilization continues. You know. Excellent. Out, of the <laughs> out wolves, small wolf, you too. Out, out small wolf. Out, oh. wolf. Oh, oh, uh-oh. All that? right, and with that, Thank right. you everyone. <laughs> we have to go do some wolf wrangling now. Yes. So Bye. This is amazing. Thank you so much for making it a happy evening. And I'll see everyone at Yola Boca Float PDX on the 18th for the kickoff. That's good. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Thank you, guys.